Welcome to Dazzy's Unite. We're going to be talking today about creating a Genesis female figure. Uh, we're going to put a wardrobe on her. We're going to put makeup on her and hair. And we're going to just walk through the process so you can see how it works. And most of the tutorials I saw when I first started learning how to use Daz Studio were focusing on really, um, you know, base figures that come prepackaged in uh, your Daz Studio install. And I wanted to use basically one of my favorite characters, Albany, because why not? Uh, and you can use any character you want. I just wanted to kind of show you what, you know, a typical figure that you might buy, what kind of um, uh, features they might have for each character. And really every character you buy will have different features, different eye makeup, different options to choose from. And it really pays to kind of look and see um, on the product page when you buy someone or a figure, uh, what what's offered. Um, and I tend to nowadays pick characters that have more interesting features. Um, like for example, they might come with a set of elf ears or some kind of like a tail or um, like fangs for a, vi a vampire or something like that where you can get more of of a good thing and what's fantastic about that is most of the time you can use those extra cool features on other characters other figures so it can help you sort of maximize your daz dollars when you're buying things in the store so again, this figure is a Genesis 8 female, and her name is Albany, and you can buy her in the Daz3D.com store. And I wanted to use her because um, I really like her body structure and her facial uh, features. And the f one of the first things that I like to do whenever I'm starting with a new character is I will put their, well, I'll decide on either a wardrobe item or a pose. And oftentimes I'll choose the pose first so that I can decide whether I need to use a deforce item or not. If a pose that I choose is crazy, like um, really twisted body parts and things like that, uh, it, it can be problematic when you're trying to run deforce. And just as a really quick aside, deforce clothing is, allows you to run a simulated animation to um, simulate real gravity and how it might flow from a base pose, this is the base zero pose, into as they move into the pose that you want them to, it will help settle the clothing around the person in a more natural way than you would get otherwise. Uh, so really what we're trying to do is in this particular one, we're not going to do anything too crazy. We're just going to pick um, a standing pose, I believe, and we're going to choose something probably um, that's meant for Genesis 8 female, even though you can actually mix and match poses that were meant for men or that were meant for uh, earlier generations of figures like Genesis, Genesis, Genesis 3, um, male or female. So you can mix and match, same thing with expressions. And oftentimes things like clothes and hair, you can mix and match from generation to generation. So I was thinking we might try an angel pose. Let's go with this one, this one's cool. Okay. So normally I might choose something with deforce, but for this more basic tutorial, we're just going to choose an outfit that is not deforce compatible. Um, that it, a lot of times if it doesn't have deforce, it'll have more options in terms of how you can pose the dress or item of clothing around the person. So that's kind of nice to know. Um, let's try something like the pastel goth. Let's try this one. This one's cute. Go into people and Genesis female to get to the, the character that you want. And you would double click on her. And then um, 
for wardrobe, you in the classic um, filing system, you actually go into the Genesis 8 female or whichever Genesis character you have, and actually you would choose characters for the person, and then you would choose clothing for the, obviously for the wardrobe, and then hair is also in there, and poses and props. Uh, in my case, I am using my own filing system, and I would recommend watching my tutorials on how to set up your own. It's really worth the trouble, I promise you. It saves me so much time having my own filing system and knowing where everything is. Daz is a fantastic program, but a lot of times you'll lose track of all the different materials and um, poses and everything that goes along with a particular asset. If you don't kind of memorize where everything is, it can be frustrating. So um, in this case, you would double click. A lot of times you'll see like a white outfit and that would indicate that that's like the base outfit that you would apply first. And then if you twizzle down, you'll see that there's materials and then you can choose colors, for example. And in this case, there's only one color. A lot of times there's multiple outfits with different color schemes and things like that. But for this particular outfit, there's just one color. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of her basic wear outfit here. So I'm just going to um, left click on one, hold the shift button down, and then click uh, left click again, and then right click to bring up a little menu, and then you would delete the selected items. So I just got rid of that. Uh, and it looks to me like there's some weirdness happening with her skirt. I'm gonna have to flip it around to see. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of going into her leg there a little bit. Um, yeah, it's some weirdness. So what I'm going to do is choose the dress. And I'm going to go over here to posing, probably. Sometimes it's hard to tell where these things are. A lot of times it'll either be in shaping, posing, or parameters. And what I'm looking for are these adjustments. Um, there's also drape morphs, it looks like. Um, so I'm just going to take a look here to see what's available. Looks like they even have one that's meant for if a character's le uh, kneeling, which is great. I'm just going to try one and see. Okay. All right. I'm just um, moving the slider around to see what moves and then hitting command Z to undo what I've just done. Um, I'm not exactly sure which pose I want to mess with. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to see if this will work better. Uh, looks like we're, oh, is that a strap? Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, lower back, mid back, ribs, sides, bottom, skirt bottom. So that kind of brings it out a little bit, but that's not quite what I'm looking for. Flare would be cool. And pull out toward the right, which would probably fix our problem. And it looks like you can add a wind flare. Um, I'm going to put some in the front because I want to make sure it's right off her skin. There we go. And I'm just going to twirl around using this uh, handy little tool. I never even think about what it's called. The orbit button. And that's great. I might actually find some underwear for her if I can think where some is. Here we go. Now we've got her full outfit on. Normally I would go find the right setting and make it all go back like that. You see how um, it, it's usually not this complicated. There's usually not this many settings. I haven't actually played with this hair much. So let me give you a short uh, look, a real quick look at how this might look if we rendered it. 
And just uh, so that you can render, uh, some really quick things to do for lighting. Um, you can actually just leave it as a base light with nothing else in it and just use, uh, let's see, a render setting. If you go over to the render settings tab, there's some different options here. You can change the size, the pixel size of how big you want your render. Um, you can also change the window. Let's say you wanted it landscape. This is six by nine, so the width is smaller than the height. If I wanted it landscape view, I would just switch this around, nine and then six. Um, and there's a lot of custom, or um, not custom, there's a lot of classic um, sizes, so you can do that. And you want to choose a name for your render, and you want to save it on your hard drive, so you would click in here and go find some folder to put it in. And the main thing to note about progressive rendering um, that there's some main things that I will play with. One of them is general and where I change the size of the render. The other one is progressive rendering and I will usually use these settings. I'll go to max samples, max time, and I usually change this like to three or five or two sometimes and often I will use 98.5 for the converged ratio. I won't go into in what any of these settings are. I just want you to be able to render quickly and have a good result. So um, I would just leave it at the base map if you just want a quick one render to see how this ends up looking. Um, and the base map is this ruins image that looks really blurry and kind of frankly ugly, but it actually does a fairly good job. You can see she's got some nice rim light on the back of her. So um, it would probably look all right to leave this all the rest of the settings like this. And that should do it for this particular um, episode. We will see you next time for some more in-depth character creation. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, let me know in the comments and feel free to subscribe to the channel to catch some more episodes. Thanks.